We're gonna have a smashing good time. Today's episode, we're going to be taking a good look at inside a laser printer. Yay! Let's get started. So this was Paul from the uni we've been and really needs to be disposed. Parents had a hissy fit about some of the crap I had in here, so... We have to tear them down into their component parts before they end up down a dump. So, first thing is... is this is very good for maintenance, because this is all held on with clips just screwed in at the back but well why not just rip it off and we have the controller board there's not a lot on it but interestingly we do have an Agilent CPU I didn't even know they made their own CPUs it's the sort of stuff I'd have expected them to outsource we also have this lovely gearbox mechanism which is probably going to have clutches and solenoids and all that good jazz so we might as well get to removing the other side, which is still clipped in. This thing is completely dead, by the way, and there's no point in restoring it. This side sits the power supply. Now, laser printers, because of their nature of using lasers and electrostatic, have both a standard switch mode, your standard low voltage coming out here, and of course a nice HV section to build up the essential, the electrostatic on the print head drum which as you can see this one's in pretty shitty condition, it looks like there's a dead, dead bug jammed in there this also isn't the kind of toner cartridge that has the uh, what do you call it? you call it the, uh, yeah, the lockout chip so this is a mechanical one to reset this or it doesn't need resetting at all So we have our standard switch mode supply down here, optocouplers for isolation, and then we get to our nice HV section around here, and this goes into the standard logic stuff, I meaning at the end of the day you don't need high voltage to run a laser. However, static you do. You also have your high current for the heaters, which I suspect they will be halogen elements. So we will take a look at that. So here we have is two are two optocouplers used for telling when the paper is being fed through the top as you can see here both of these I imagine there's two for redundancy because say one half comes out fine but the other half gets jammed the printer needs to be able to detect that error condition so that just adds in some redundancy so it can you'll also find this plastic rod here and you'll notice there's a little mechanism coming out there that is the drive mechanism for the toner cartridge and this of course engages a gear which will allow the toner cartridge to be easily removed when the lid is closed How, and when it's open will allow the toner cartridge to be engaged when the lid is closed and when it's open it will allow the toner cartridge to be easily removed for replacement and there we have our high voltage static outputs here, here and here you build up static on the drum and there's crap on the lens isn't there yeah let's do it what we have here is essentially the motor control board and also the rest of the control electronics for the printer as not too surprisingly you don't see much in the way of interfacing on that board do you well a lot of it goes through here and there will also be data communication lines to the power supply because a lot of optocouplers communicate over here this is essentially like an IO board which also has the motor driver chips an auxiliary processor which is very difficult to see what the part number is on it and of course the laser module now this is mounted on, you might have seen the black part here when we had it open well that is a mechanical switch so when the doors open this is always in the down state but when it's started down it's up because if you look here we have a class 3B laser and not just that it's also in the IR spectrum, which means, yeah, your eyes aren't going to stand a chance because they can't even see the damn thing to react to it. And here we have the main drive motor, which drives all the mechanics in the whole printer. Hence, quite a, hence this side is basically nothing more than an oversized gearbox. 
Under here we have the feed tray where there's the roller that pulls up the paper into the main print mechanism. The actual print tray really doesn't have much to it other than some springs which push the paper up towards the roller to give some tension so it can grip it and pull the page up. And the springs are not too amazing but I'd say they're worth salvaging. I certainly use them for something. Hell, I've used springs in my pit boy that I'm building. So yeah, not much to that mechanism. A bit boring. The real meat is... Well, we've gotten the best bit. That and its driver. <laughs> That's a bit I really wanted from this. And any potentially useful mechanical bit. Gotta love that earthing. Straight from the point, no wires to fray or get damaged. Bolted straight to the case. Thumbs up HP. Always save the opto couplers. They're always handy, even if it's just for repairing other bits of equipment you have. So once the laser's done its raster scan on the drum and the paper's passed up through to the toner assembly, because toner is essentially a powder which has got wax in it, what the next stage is, once it's been coated onto the paper, then it goes through the fuser which is a massive great heating element. Now we've got cable here which is probably some sort of output, and we've got the actual high current cables which don't feel like high voltage, 200 centigrade, da 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 da. 300 volts max, so we're not looking at high voltage, but we're looking at high current. And so, sometimes it's the halogen assembly, sometimes it's not, but it heats up and melts the wax so it bonds it permanently to the paper. Look at this big pile of useless crap to me, including the toner cartridge. And so it goes up here, I'm not sure if it goes round this bit or behind this bit, but it eventually emerges out here to where the trip sensors, where the optocouplers are now gone, but points are that tell the printer it's made it through. It's why printer, it's why um, laser printers have that unique smell and also heat. I kind of like the weird smell toner, mate. Another thing to note, this is very brittle plastic here. It's not ABS, it's actually PET. Now, I'm not a plastics expert, so I don't know the specifics of it, but... An interesting note, I think, to note what plastics are used in this thing, which seems to be mostly PET. So this obviously must be heat resistant or something like that. Because obviously you don't want something that melts easily and the uh, bonds are... Now interestingly, this heater is not a the assembly I thought it was. We've got this, which is probably some sort of sensor. Then we've got the main actual points of the heating element, but this looks like your standard sort of ceramic heating element. Interesting. And then it was within this grey plastic tube, so yes it did go between this tube and the red head, and this is very smooth and nice to the touch. I'm sure if you're a machinist you could use this for something. It's very smooth. It has a really strange texture to it. Certainly some material that might be of use to mechanics of some kind. You've also got rollers here which should, can be handy if you can extract singular ones. I was saying about solenoid and clutch mechanisms. Found it! And then this solenoid obviously, there you go, engaged. And then, not engaged! There's a clutch mechanism, similarly. Well, it's probably not technically a clutch mechanism, but a mechanism that allows you to engage and disengage it using a good old classic solenoid. Worth saving these, they can be handy for various little projects, especially this is a self-contained unit. It doesn't have the piston that will often fall out and get lost. What this module is all about. A hole, a nice gear and gearbox mechanism, all self-contained, just what we like. A heating element, we can probably use that to heat itself up when we call. A random circuit board which really isn't much use, but we can pillage the LEDs and connectors off it. And it does have an I2C EEPROM on there, so we might even be able to use it for hacking practice or something. We have a laser mo scanner module, a laser raster scanner module, which once again could be fun for building laser burners, maybe you could fit in a green laser or something in there and have a nice little laser light show mechanism then if you have a mirror which directs it up and down you can raster scan images and stuff on the wall 
We have the motor drivers and drivers for the motors and lasers. We have multiple optocouplers. In fact, there's only four in the whole machine. They're always handy for repairing other stuff or projects like you could use them as obstacle avoidance. A solenoid. These are always worth saving. You never know when you might need a solenoid in a project. And of course, a power supply board, which isn't necessarily useful on its own, but you can extract plenty of useful high voltage, high current, all that goodness from it. Now you can reuse in projects at home. But sadly, the good stuff is always less than the crap. And that shall all go off to be recycled. Theoretically, it'll probably just end up in some porous estate in Africa. Don't forget your hold of springs and screws. Toner cartridges aren't necessarily worth the effort to disassemble them because there's usually nothing in them. Maybe a few little mechanics that might be in use, but usually they go in the junk box. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and enjoy salvaging laser printer parts because there's actually quite a haul of good bits in there. A lot better than standard printers, especially in this. Looking at that, you wouldn't th think my Wii output is actually that small. It is compared to most. Only I tend to build up part crap and then chuck it rather than just chuck it as and when it fails. So actually, that's quite a few years worth of Wii.